Hi everyone, welcome to X2 Academy. This course will teach you how to master the process of setting parameters both efficiently and perfectly. We will start by explaining the relationship between material properties and laser parameters, and then the universal setting formulas proven by our team experts, including using advanced techniques like test arrays and other unique XCS features. Before we begin, make sure that you're familiar with basic parameters like power, speed, and focus. If not, we recommend you checking out the 7th video of XCS 101, our latest intro level course. So, are you ready to crack the mystery now? Let's get started! If you need translations in more languages, you can turn on YouTube Bottle Translate feature by clicking the settings icon, selecting Subtitle CC, and choosing Auto Translate with your preferred language. Understanding material properties is the foundation of setting the right laser parameters. Different materials respond differently to laser processing. For example, wood burns easily while acrylic melts, and metals reflect laser beams. These differences therefore require us to adjust the laser power, speed, and others accordingly. So, let's explore some common materials and their properties. Wood is usually a soft, organic material that burns easily under high laser power. So, to achieve clean cuts or engravings, it's best to use moderate power and higher speed. Additionally, the type of wood matters. Hardwoods like oak require more power compared to softwoods like pine. Acrylic is a thermoplastic material that melts under heat. For engraving, lower power and higher speed ensure a frosted finish without deformation. For cutting, higher power and slower speed produce smooth, polished edges. Metals like stainless steel are hard and reflective make them more challenging to work with lasers. Engraving requires precise control of power for detailed designs, while cutting demands high power and assistive gases like oxygen or nitrogen to ensure smooth edges. Leather is a flexible organic material that can burn or discolor under high laser power. For engraving, lower power prevents burning and keeps details sharp, while cutting requires control power to avoid charred edges. Of course, there are many different types of materials you can work with. So we have created a table for you and please feel free to take a screenshot of it for future needs. Have you ever felt that testing laser parameters can be a bit of a hustle? Well, think of it like mixing a cocktail. It takes a little time and patience to get the right balance, but once you do, you create the perfect flavor for your project. So today I'm going to share with you a simple universal formula for almost all materials. But here's one important question we need to answer before getting started. What exactly determines the laser settings you need? To put it simply, there are four key factors. First, the machine itself. Every machine is different. Its power output and condition play a big role. For example, a brand new laser will perform differently compared to the one that's been heavily used over time. Second, the material. Different materials like wood, acrylic, or metal vary in thickness, density, and heat absorption. Each of these characteristics requires its own unique settings. Third, environmental factors. High humidity, for example, can increase the moisture content of wood, which might affect your cutting results. Plus, keeping your laser's optics clean is also critical for consistent performance. And finally, the processing method. Cutting and engraving have very different requirements. Complex designs may need more precise adjustments for better results. Sounds like a lot to think about, right? Don't worry, you don't need to perfect everything at once. Instead, focusing on the essentials first and refining as needed is the key. That's what we call a two-step method for testing. Step number one, achieve a 70% result. Forget about everything and just focus on the core parameters power and speed. Or you can think as only considering the settings with sliders in XCS, and quickly find a power and speed combination that works. Remember, at this stage, you are only aiming for a functional, good enough 70 score result. Step number two, optimize for the 100% result. Once you have the baseline, refine other parameters like the number of passes to perfect the outcome. This approach keeps the testing simple and efficient. The four factors we discussed earlier will also help you troubleshoot and make adjustments as needed. 
Now, let us take a 3mm piece of best wood and walk through this two-step process to see it in action. If you are using a new material, it's a good idea to buy a little extra for testing. Having some material set aside makes it easier to find the perfect settings without stress. If it's a material you've used before or something similar, testing is even simpler. Just start with your previous settings and tweak as needed. Alright, let's get started. Import your design file into XES. In this course, we will test the same design and find the best settings both for the engraving and the cutting processes separately. To make it clear, you can also put some notes, like a title and the processing type under each element. To find the settings in the most efficient way, what we need to do is to check for references first, so we can use it to narrow down the testing range. In XCS, click User Defined Material in the top right corner to access the EasySet Material Library. Use the search bar to look up your material. In our case, it will be 3mm best wood. And you can see the material shows up here. We can now import the material settings directly by just clicking on it. Now, in the parameter panel, let's choose what we want. For engraving this design, I will select the second one from the button in the third column. You can also update the notes once you've confirmed the settings. We highly recommend you to put it as coordinates. Since it's in the third column, we will put the X coordinate as 3 and the 2 as the Y coordinate since the second one from the bottom. Okay, let's do the same for the cutting piece. Since we've selected the first one in the third column, we put 3, 1 in the notes. The settings have been tested many times by Xtool technicians and should give you the results you want. But as mentioned before, other factors may cause differences in settings, so we suggest trying a few variants just to avoid possible differences. So, in this case, I'll test two more sets. I can make two copies of the original set and arrange them below. For the first set, I would like to see how the fourth one in the third column will work in engraving, and I'll update the coordinates. And for cutting, since they are all cut through, let's see if the second one in the first column will also work so I can save some power and cut faster. And for the second set, let's tweak the settings a little bit. For engraving, we can increase power by 10% to see if it's darker. And for cutting, let's make it faster by increasing 2 mm per second. Alright, now we are done with all the settings. Let's process it and see how they will come out. Alright, let's take a look at how everything turned out. The original settings worked just fine. The engraving came out clean with no burn marks and the cutting fully went through with smooth, clear edges. Now, with test group 1, the engraving is deeper and has more dimension, but it still looks super clean. The cutting also went all the way through and the edges are just as smooth and clear. As for task group 2, the engraving is also deeper, but there is a bit of burn marking this time, which wasn't there in the other groups, so we probably ruled this one out. That said, the cutting still got through fine, and the edges stayed clean. So here's the deal, if you are looking for a deeper engraving, go with the settings from test group 1. But if the speed is more important for cutting, test group 1's cutting parameters might be your best bet. Alright, so with easy set, We've already nailed down the 70% perfect parameters. Now you're ready to move on to the next step, finding the 100% perfect settings. If you can find your material, that's okay. We can also find the settings manually. Let's see how to do it. All right, so let's pretend that Basswood doesn't exist in our material library. So now we need to manually figure out the right parameters for this material. What we can do is to first look up for a similar material of Basswood. In our case, we can choose cherry wood, plywood. In XCS, select the object you want to test, then click the application icon on the left and choose the material test array function. Material test array is a super handy tool in XCS that helps us quickly generate a matrix of parameter combinations for power and speed. In this function panel, on the left, you can set the range for power, the number of tests, and the distance between each test element. On the right, you see the similar settings for speed. So, how do we decide the test range? Here's a simple rule of thumb. 
Follow the range suggested by the one-click set panel. We want to recreate the same table and see which one works best in our case. Next, set the number of columns and rows to 5. This creates a 5x5 test grid, meaning we will test 25 parameter combinations at once. Once you've done that, click on the blank area of the canvas to see an overview of your test settings. You can over hover over each test element to see its specific parameter values. If needed, you can fine tune individual elements for more precise testing. Now, I'll do the same for the cutting test. Alright, we are all set. Here we have created two testing tables. Time to start processing. So, let's check out the results. Count to five. Which engraving effect is the best? This one looks the best to us since we want something not too dark with burn marks as little as possible. And which cutting setting looks good to you? Since we want the element to be cut through with less burn marks, this one looks like the best choice. Now, don't forget to head back into XCS and input these parameters into the material settings. Go ahead and save them as a new material profile. Call it best so you can easily reuse it next time. Next, let's move on to the final step, optimizing parameters to go from 70% to 100%. Based on the initial 70% settings, we achieve a more perfect result through small-scale fine-tuning. The rule of thumb is, we always start by increasing the power, keeping the adjustments within 10%. If the power reaches 100% or boom mark starts to appear, we stop adjusting power and move on to tweaking the speed or other settings, such as the number of passes. For the previous cutting test, since the one with the smallest power and the speed still has some burn marks, we can use them as the maximum value in the material test array and create a new table with smaller ranges. After testing, the optimized cutting results were much better with smoother edges and reduced burn marks. If your material is thicker, you may need to slightly increase the power or add more passes. After testing, we also found an optimized engraved result with a completely smooth surface and almost no scorch marks. Through this series of optimizations, we successfully achieved the lead from 70 points to 100 points. Alright, let's bring it all together with a quick recap and some handy tips for testing. First, remember to test in stages. Don't stress about perfection right away. Start with settings that are pretty good, like 70%, and then fine-tune your way to that perfect 100%. It's all about working step by step. Next, use the tools at your fingertips. The EasySet Material Library and the Material Test Array are total game changers. They will save your time and make the whole process so much smoother. And here's a pro tip. Always set aside some extra material for testing. When you are stocking up, grab a little more than you need so you've got space to do the experiments. Here's the thing, testing parameters isn't just trial and error, it's a skill. And the more you practice, the more you will get at dialing in the perfect settings for any material. Soon enough, you'll be handling this like a real pro. Question number one, why isn't my material cutting all the way through? Well, this is one of the most common issues. The main calculators are usually power that is too low or speed that is too high. To fix this, try increasing the power or slowing down the speed. For thicker materials, you might also need to increase the number of passes to ensure the laser cuts all the way through. Question number two, why are the edges burned or scorched after cutting? Well, burn marks or scorching typically happen when the power is too high or the speed is too slow. To minimize this, lower the power or increase the speed slightly will be good. Question number three, why does engraving leave burn marks on the surface? If you are seeing burn marks during engraving, the power is likely too high. Lowering the power or increasing the speed can help. Another tip is to keep the surface of your material clean before engraving. You can also apply masking tape to the surface to reduce burn marks. It's a simple but effective trick. Question number four, the material test array is too large, how can I narrow it down? If your test range feels a little bit too broad, you can shrink it based on the initial results. 
Focus on the parameter combinations that work the best in the first test. Use those to create a smaller, more focused matrix for a second round of testing. This way you can get the perfect settings more quickly. Question number five, why do the same settings produce different results on different materials? This happens because every material is unique. Differences in density, thickness, and surface finish can all affect the results. Even the materials of the same type but from different batches can have slightly different variations. That's why it's important to test each material individually to ensure the best results. And that's it! Congratulations on completing this course! Now it's time to fire up your XCS and bring your ideas to life. Good luck and happy testing!